Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair hosted by Strivescam. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great lineup of institutions here to present to you, but a few housekeeping items before we get started. This is a webinar. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. We do encourage you to list the institution that you are asking the question to. This helps our presenters answer that question a little bit quicker for you. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different session, uh, sessions happening, so be sure to go and sign up for more. And this presentation is being recorded, as well as others, will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. There you go. Um, I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, and first up is Lincoln University. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Kenyatta Austin. I am the Senior Admissions Counselor for Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Um, and I am excited to share a little bit of information of, with, with you about our institution. Um, I only have six minutes, so if I do talk fast, please be, bear with me. Um, so first I'm going to start off by telling you where we're located. So we're located in Southern Chester County, Pennsylvania. Um, if you were to receive mailing from our institution, it would say Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. So we are a city within our, ourselves. Um, if you can see the virtual picture behind me, that is basically a picture of our institution. Um, we are the nation's first historically black degree granting college founded in 1854. We were originally founded as Ashman Institute and then changed our name in 1866 after Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Our mission and goal is to educate and empower our students to lead their communities and to change the world. And we do that by doing three things. Um, we call it the three L's, which is learn, liberate, and lead. We provide our students with a vigorous uh, liberal arts education where they are then being given the opportunity to take what they're learning inside of the classroom and to utilize it throughout their time on campus, whether it's from campus events to academic programming and so forth. And then at ultimately at the end that will get our students to go graduate, which our graduation uh, commencement took place today. So it was an exciting time for us for the class of 2021. And our goal is for them to go out into the world and make the change that that is needed. Uh, we have approximately 2000 students on our campus with a 15 to one student to teacher ratio. So our classroom sizes are fairly small. You are able to build interpersonal relationships with your professor. I know this personally because I am also an alum from Lincoln. Um, we were listed as one of the top 20 HBCUs. We have over 30 plus undergraduate programs ranging from nursing to biology to business, to mass communications, criminal justice, psychology, sociology. We even have Black Studies and Pan-Africana Studies as an opportunity for students to take. Um, talk a little bit about you know, paying for the cost of, student, of school. So 97% of our students receive financial aid um, from our institution. 60% of those students see, receive some type of financial academic support from our office. So we do offer scholarships for students. So if you are a graduating senior and you were interested in applying to Lincoln, um, Currently, right now, our deadline for scholarships have passed, but if you are interested in applying for the fall 2022 academic school year, um, our application deadline for scholarships is February 1st. We have a vast amount of opportunities for students, um, ranging from students getting $18,000 a year, $10,000, $5,000. It depends on what your criteria looks like. Um, our average student has a 3.0 with a 980 uh, criti combined critical reading and math score or 18 composite ACT score. We do, because of COVID, um, have a other option for students to apply to our school, which I'll talk a little bit about later down the line about how to fill out an application with us. Um, if you are an athlete, we are a division two school, so you can qualify for um, scholarship opportunities through athletics. So we offer for men, football, basketball, baseball, track and field, indoor, outdoor, cross country, and cheerleading is co-ed. For women, we have soccer, volleyball, basketball, softball, track and field, indoor, outdoor, cross country, as well as cheerleading. Now our cheerleading team is considered to be non-competitive, so they don't necessarily compete often, but they do have competitions throughout the year. We have over 70 plus organizations on campus. I know some of you are probably like, oh, you're in the middle of nowhere. What is there to do? There is a lot for students to do on our campus. So if you are interested in joining um, 
you know, a big sister, little sister, which is a mentoring pro, uh, club. That's an opportunity for you. We have step teams, fashion clubs, dance clubs, you name it, we have it. If we do not have it, there is an opportunity for you to actually start what we call a Lincoln legacy on our campus. So if you see something that is that you want to do or make a change and you, do, you see that we don't have that as an opportunity, you can start your own organization with Student Life and Development Office on our campus. So those are just a few things um, that I kind of wanted to make clear. I want to talk about one more important thing. So we do have a scholarship opportunity for students who graduate from Lincoln University with a 3.0 GPA. Um, you have to become a Pennsylvania State resident and you have five years to qualify for this scholarship. It's called our Horace Mann Bond Scholarship. And with that scholarship, you could attend law school, medical school, or get your master's degree from free. So we are tied to the 14 state Pashi schools. Um, so just naming three of them is Temple University, Penn State University, and University of Pittsburgh. And so right now, um, there are students who graduated today that have been offered that opportunity to go to school for free through this program. So that is definitely an opportunity I want you guys to take advantage of and knowing what it is that you're trying to do and to prepare for your future because school is expensive. So there are some things that you could take into consideration. Um, if you are interested in applying to Lincoln uh, or just to fill out an inquiry because you may not be you know, at the stage where you, if you're graduating from school, you can scan this QR code. You can create an inquiry, which will take, get your information to us. Um, if you are graduating and you wanna apply, still you can scan this and you can complete our application. It is totally free online. Um, you do not have to pay a fee for it. We do require, if you're doing traditional admissions, your SAT or ACT scores, uh, and then that's the information that we would need from you. If you are applying without your SAT or ACT scores, we would then need you to complete, uh, say yes to the lift option, and then you can complete those supplemental questions in contrary to your SAT scores. It looks like my time is running out. Uh, thank you guys for having me. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I put a link for a virtual tour in the chat for you. So please take a chance, take some time to look at that. Thanks so much, Lincoln University. Um, next up, Elizabeth City State University. Great, thanks for having us today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fisher McInville. I'm one of the freshmen at admissions counselors here at the Elizabeth City State University, home of the mighty Vikings. You are looking at the most affordable HBCU in the entire country and also the most affordable state university in the University of North Carolina system. So I have a video, we're on a five minute video set up for you all. So if you do have any questions, just feel free to ask us in the Q&A session. One second. Our strategic plan that we have titled Forging Our Future is a plan for the university's outlook as we build a map of where we want to go for the future. One focus is growth and then also building our regional development. And then we wanna look at ways in which we can enhance our capital. You know, how do we attract people here to want to work, to want to live in this area of Northeastern North Carolina? And I'm very proud of our students and they never forget their past, but it becomes part of their story, part of their journey. And it becomes part of their narrative that they are even more anxious and excited to share and talk about. We always say we want our students to come here to discover their passions, but leave to conquer their dreams. And here, I think they will definitely get that opportunity to do exactly that. Be the difference at Elizabeth City State University and discover your strength, ignite your passion, and prepare to make a difference in the world. Be a teacher, be a pilot, be an entrepreneur. Be a scientist, be the difference at ECSU. Whether you want to educate the next generation of students, fly the blue skies, own your own business, or be a scientist, you can discover your passion at ECSU. From aviation, education, and business to the arts, homeland security, and technology, ECSU prepares students to compete in the global workforce. You can conquer your dreams at ECSU with over 30 undergraduate and four graduate degree programs, including both online degree options and face-to-face -face course instruction. 
Elizabeth City State University is a proud NC Promise campus, which means tuition is only $500 per semester for in-state students and $2,500 per semester for out-of-state students. As the most affordable public university in the University of North Carolina system, you can be the difference at ECSU with an affordable, high-quality education. ECSU believes everyone should have access to higher education and will work with you to provide resources to help you obtain your degree. Such resources include federal and state grants, state and institutional scholarships, employment opportunities, and student loans. Students looking for a quality, affordable education in a nurturing, supportive environment will find it at ECSU. At ECSU, size does matter, and ECSU's small size equates to small classes and one-on-one -on -one attention from professors. Students know their classmates, their professors, and they know that the ECSU faculty and staff are committed to their academic success. But ECSU also understands the importance of providing safe and comfortable spaces for its students to rest, dine, study, and relax. For students interested in living on campus, ECSU offers the choice of premier residential halls equipped with suite-style apartments and single or double occupancy rooms. Each residence hall features lounge areas, laundry facilities, key card entry, handicap accessibility, computer rooms, internet, cable TV, and telephone access. Outdoor solar charging stations are also available for student use. In addition to quality living spaces for students, ECSU has a friendly and highly trained staff available around the clock to provide assistance. The ECSU Office of Housing and Residence Life is there to provide students with a comfortable and secure community living environment that is engaging and educationally purposeful. For more information on room rates and availability, contact the Office of Housing and Residence Life. ECSU Campus Dining is another way to feel at home. Students can relax, enjoy different events and theme nights, monthly specials, and an array of tasty food choices. Meal plans designed to accommodate your lifestyle are available and include a mix of traditional and nutritious menu options. Whether on the go, an early bird, or a casual diner, we are sure to fulfill your expectations. The Bedell Dining Hall provides a variety of meal options and times to meet students' needs. Additional dining is also available at Viking Subs and Austin Grill in the Ridley Student Center. Welcome to ECSU, where your success, safety, and comfort matter. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do have any other questions at all about Elizabeth City State University, feel free to ask us in the Q&A session. Again, thank you all for having me. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Virginia State University. Virginia State University. Okay, I think we will move on to the next and, and hope Virginia State can join us in just a second. Um, next up, we have Lycoming College. Okay. Sorry about this, one second. Hello everyone, um, I hope you are uh, having a good day, um, a good Sunday. My name is Craig Washington. 
I'm uh, one of the admissions counselors here at Lycoming College. I'm specifically the admissions counselor for the DC, Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware areas. That's why I'm currently on this call. Uh, so I wanted to uh, just start off today by just, I just wanted to tell you like a little bit about Lycoming College. So uh, we are actually a, a small liberal arts college, uh, private institution um, located in Williamsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so if you see the photo in the center, uh, that is our Craft Gateway Center, which is home to our admissions office, our uh, Center for uh, Enhanced Academic Experiences, and also um, our Outdoor Leadership Education Department. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about those uh, throughout this time. So on our campus, we offer about 43 majors and 66 minors. Um, we're one of the oldest colleges in the United States, but we still want to make sure we're up to date with all of our programs. So each, each year we keep reassessing and um, adjusting our, adjusting our uh, curriculum. Um, we also offer uh, cross-disciplinary programs. So if, for instance, if your program isn't specifically offered at our institution, we'll uh, be able to we'll be able to work to kind of craft it. Um, so for instance, one of our students, um, her name is Alicia. Uh, she works as a tour guide in our office. Um, she actually wanted to study uh, uh, the healthcare system, but she worked in the healthcare system, but she also wanted to study the inequalities of the healthcare system. Um, so she's working with our sociology department and also our biology department, um, pre-med to um, get both of those, uh, to create her own major basically. So like Homing College, we have a little over uh, 1,200 students on campus. So we're a very small liberal arts school. Uh, with that, um, we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. So with, the, uh, with that, we have very small classes. Um, our, all of our professors are very committed to the one-on-one -on -one connection with all their students. So you'll never just be like, you'll never feel like a number in the, in, in the classroom. You, know, it, uh, you really start form those relationships with your professors. Um, at our institution, some of our uh, most popular majors is psychology, um, biology, pre-med, our pre-law program, um, um, uh, business is popular, and criminal justice is also a popular program. Uh, some of our more unique majors that we offer is astrophysics, uh, biochemistry, um, 3D animation, uh, it's one of our newer ones, um, and entrepreneurship studies. Uh, at like Homey College, you want to make sure you're not just getting uh, education. You're also, you know, getting that fieldwork experience. So 100% um, of our students are uh, required before they graduate to complete something called an enhanced academic experience. So an enhanced academic experience is anything from studying abroad, uh, go, uh, having an internship, um, doing any uh, research projects or any fieldwork experiences as well. Um, and all of those are actually handled and directed in our Center for Enhanced Academic Experiences. Um, so the CEAE is, a depart is an office that has, that all our students are welcome to access um, and help them plan for any of these internship experiences they wanna do or study abroad opportunities they wanna do. Um, each, each, each program within our school each uh, department and major has a specific advisor in that office. So when you go to these meetings, you're not just meeting with a random person, you'll be meeting directly with somebody who's worked with students in your shoes before, um, who's familiar with internship opportunities available back home um, and abroad. Um, I think one of the most telling things about uh, our preparation for our students is our, is not only our graduation rate, but also the amount of students who are employed um, employed or in graduate school uh, six to 12 months after, um, after they graduate, which is about 98% of our students. Um, we also have about 80 plus campus clubs and organizations. So while you're on campus, you can get involved. Uh, one of the biggest organizations is the Outdoor Leadership Education Program office. Um, and that office just tries to get students outside. So we're right on the Susquehanna River in, in uh, Williamsport. So students can um, go kayaking and our, we'll, we'll plan events to go kayaking. They'll also plan events to go hiking throughout the area. Uh, the o OLE, the Outdoor Leadership Education uh, Department, they also plan events um, out of the country. Sometimes they took students to the Bahamas before, to the Dominican Republic before. They also take students to things in the U.S. like the uh, Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls. Um, they just want to do any just provide students with opportunities to get outside and just uh, be more a part of nature. 
Uh, one thing that I think makes like homing very unique also is that 100% of our students earn uh, earn some type of uh, scholarship or, or um, financial aid uh, through our school. So at our school, immediately when you apply, you'll be uh, considered for a merit-based scholarship, which is somewhere between 18 and $30,000 this year. Um, and that's gonna be renewable every single year. We also stack our scholarships as well. Um, so I, I, since I'm running out of time, I uh, suggest you all check out our website to see some of our application materials. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Monmouth University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jihad Johnson. I'm one of the undergraduate admission counselors here at Monmouth University. Uh, Monmouth University is a private institution located in West Long Branch, New Jersey. Um, our undergraduate population is about 4,500 undergraduate students and about 1,500 graduate students. 98% um, of our students do receive um, some sort of financial aid. Um, we do have institutional uh, specific grants and scholarships that we offer to students and any state or federal awards as well, as well as endowed scholarships. Um, about 85% of our first year students do live on campus. Um, and one unique thing about Monmouth University is that in your uh, junior and senior year, you do have the opportunity to live in our beachfront housing. Um, so as you can see in the PowerPoint, um, you do get a beautiful view of the water. Um, as a student at Monmouth University um, for undergrad and graduate school, I had the opportunity to live in the beachfront housing um, housing facilities, which is a phenomenal experience at Monmouth University. So if you're interested in the shore area, Monmouth University could be a great fit for you. Um, our average class size is about 21 students and we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. What that means is, is that you're really going to have a personalized education experience where you're gonna build genuine relations with your professors, they'll know your names. But then it's also provides you with the opportunity to um, you know, uh, do research, you get to um, do national conferences with professors. Um, so it really does allow you to collaborate with your professors a lot. Um, we also, 74% uh, of our faculty do hold PhDs or higher degrees in their respective fields. Um, we have students represented in about 36 different states and about 34 different countries. We also do have um, 23 division one sports. And I'm just going to go to another slide just to share with you all some more information. Um, for our academic majors and minors, um, some of our more popular programs, uh, education, uh, communication, business, um, anthropology, um, social work is very popular. We also do your five-year um, bachelor plus master's program um, in social work and in business. Um, some of our more popular programs that have been up and coming, our nursing program is very, very competitive. We do accept about 60 students into our program, and that is one of our direct entry programs, which means that there is a separate, separate application for that program. Um, another popular program is our three plus three occupational therapy doctoral program, as well as our four plus two um, health studies and speech language pathology. Um, students do have the opportunity of using our bachelor's plus master's tool to kind of see how they can uh, pair up a bachelor's and master's degree. Um, and it could be a wide range from my like, communications to something with speech language pathology or um, education and psychology. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can pair up different uh, programs. So we do have a brand new tool. If you go to bachelor's plus master's at Monmouth University, you actually do have a guide where you can pair some of those different things. Um, another great thing about Monmouth University is that our career services team does a phenomenal job of making sure that our students not only get internships, but are prepared for the workforce after college. 76% um, of our students do complete a, some sort of internship, co-op, or practicum prior to their senior year. Um, we have one of our former student ambassadors, Bruce Wilson, who is pictured here, um, who actually obtained his real estate license in his junior year. So most of his senior year, um, he did work part-time while completing his undergraduate degree. One of my favorite things about Monmouth University is the opportunity for our students to go global. Um, we do have study abroad programs that go to Argentina, Spain, Italy, Germany, 
England and Australia. We also do offer global experience programs where students are able to go on trips from 10 to 12 days. Um, we have trips that currently go to Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Haiti. Um, as a student, I had the opportunity of going to Nicaragua and Guatemala to complete service work. So that's also another very popular program at Monmouth University. As I mentioned before, we are a division one athletic school with very successful programs ranging from football, basketball, soccer, field hockey, lacrosse. Um, our football team actually just won their conference championship this past spring. Um, our men's soccer team actually also won a conference championship. So our athletic programs for a small school to have a division one program um, that does compete to some of the largest schools is phenomenal. So if you're looking for an environment where you're engaged into the community and a lot of school spirit, Mom University is a great place. Um, we also do have 100 clubs and organizations. Almost all of our students are involved in uh, different clubs and organizations. Some of our more popular uh, clubs are the Student Government Association, Black Student Union. Uh, we have also our own record label, Blue Hawk Records, and our own recording studio, Lake House uh, Recording Studio in Asbury. Um, if you all are familiar with the recording artist, Laura, she also does utilize, has utilized our um, recording studio to record some of her songs. Um, so students do produce an album each semester. And then you also do have the opportunity to start your own club organization at Monmouth University. Um, and I know I'm running short on time. Um, I do want to mention that if you do not see a club listed here, you do have the opportunity of starting your own club at Monmouth University. Um, if you have any questions um, about Monmouth University, um, please feel free to reach out to me. You can take a visit to our website, monmouth.edu slash visit. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Old Dominion University. All right, y'all. So to close us out for the evening today, my name is Lauren Irvine, current admissions counselor at Old Dominion University, located in the metropolitan city of Norfolk. Um, in the beautiful state of Virginia. We are located on the East Coast um, and our campus has a beautiful combination of being in a metropolitan city um, in a coastal area while still having a residential feel. Um, I will point out the QR code on this, uh, this slide right now. Um, if you are on a computer and have access to your cell phone, um, just simply take out the camera um, and hover over the QR code. Basically, you can send us your information um, so we can send you um, upcoming events, um, tour information, and so on. Um, so a little bit about Old Dominion. We were originally the Norfolk Division of the College of William and Mary, which is right down the road from us. Um, and then in 1969, we became our own university. Um, so talking a little bit about some statistics, we have about 25,000 students. Um, we have a very large online student population, um, and this number includes those students. Um, and we also have, so this number is online students, undergraduate students, master's students, um, students studying towards their PhDs. Um, we have seven academic colleges as well, um, which basically your, whatever major you're studying will um, put you in a certain academic college. Um, for organizational purposes, you'll know who your advisor is through them. Um, and so on. We also have an honors college and then a graduate school as well. We actually have 35 CHEV awards. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with CHEV, um, it is the highest award that a professor in the state of Virginia can receive. Um, and we do have 35 of them, not 33. Um, and we like to joke that we are, so we are second in the state, but we like to joke that um, we're right behind William and Mary, and we'll soon be catching up to them since they had a couple hundred year, year jump on us. Um, 17 to 1 is going to be the student to faculty ratio. Um, this means that you'll be in smaller class sizes, your professors will know your name, and they'll be available for, um, you know, office hours, and whenever you need to meet with them, um, they should be able to meet with you back. And then we do have 98 different degree programs um, and majors, including um, engineering, um, business, nursing, dental hygiene, um, communications, marketing. Uh, so we have a wide variety of options there. And then when it comes to student life, we have over 300 student organizations. Um, so we have a wide variety, um, anything from a waffle making club um, to a women in engineering club. 
And of course, if you don't have, um, or if we don't have something <laughs> in your interest, you and a few of your friends and a faculty signature, um, can you can create your own, which is awesome. Um, and then of course we have over 30 um, fraternities and sororities. If you are interested in joining one of those, we actually have a week of welcome, um, which is the first semester, the first week of the fall semester. Um, and essentially all of the clubs and organizations, fraternities and sororities, um, they'll come and set up a table um, on Kaufman Mall, which is right in front of the um, Lion Fountain. Um, and basically you can walk around and find out more information about clubs and organizations, sports teams, um, and all of that kind of stuff. So it's kind of awesome. Um, and that will be, you know, just in passing like on your way to class, um, those tables will be set up all day. And then we do have 14 housing options. Um, for freshmen, it'll look like a Jack and Jack style or a Jill and Jill style. So um, there will be, you and your roommate will share a bathroom um, that connects to another room with two other people. So on our campus at ODU, we do not have any communal bathrooms and the most people to one bathroom um, is four. And then of course we have 17 dining locations. Food is really important to us at ODU, for me especially. Um, we have freestanding dining hall, um, we have Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, we have all of those chain restaurants, um, which a lot of students find to be very important, and I agree with. Um, for some freshman application information, we have rolling admissions, which is really important to note. Um, so we will accept applications before and after these dates. Um, we are on the Common App, and we have our own ODU application. Whichever you want to apply through is fine with us. Um, we also have a $50 non-refundable application fee. Of course, we require high school transcripts, um, SAT and ACT test scores. If you have them, submit them one or the other or both, whichever. Um, you can also self-report your test scores, which uh, you can just input the scores that you got. But if you do intend to come to ODU, that is when you would send us those official scores or were test optional. So you don't even have to submit test scores um, because of the lack of um, availability of the test scores in the last year or so we have completely removed the GPA requirement. So any student, regardless of GPA, can apply test optional. And two dates to keep in mind, December 1st and February 1st. And then here are some, uh, some numbers based off of in-state, out-of-state, living on campus or living off campus. Um, this is what tuition would look like. Um, keep in mind that these numbers have you know, no financial aid or no merit scholarships or grants or anything inputted in them. And is it is an average credit amount, 15 credits. Um, I will note my last comment for today. Um, we do have, we do offer merit-based scholarships for students. So just for submitting an application, all students are considered for merit-based scholarships. Um, and then of course we have a ton of out of, um, we have a ton of other ODU scholarships that students can apply for. Um, and then last note, here is some information from our admissions department. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. I do want to check with Virginia State University, see if they are able to present today. They might be having some technical challenges. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, Virginia State, is that you? Perfect. Yes, it is. How All are right. you doing? Go for it. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chanel Stafford, admissions counselor here at Virginia State University. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, start this presentation. All right. So once again, um, Chanel Stafford. Here's a picture of our beautiful campus. We sit on about 236 acres in Petersburg, Virginia, so central Virginia. Uh, we're about 20, 25 minutes south of Richmond, the state capital. We're also about two hours south of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Two hours to the west of Virginia Beach in Virginia, and about two hours um, north of Raleigh and Durham in North Carolina. So the great thing about our central location is that we're super accessible. You can get pretty much anywhere in no time. So a quick video for you. You have the power right now to transform your life through education and a commitment to learn. You have the power right now to build a life you love through preparation, hard work, and dedication. 
You have the power right now to shape your life. No matter how hard it's been, you can always begin again. Do something that your future self will thank you for. Come to Virginia State University, a transformative experience. All right, so um, one moment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the city, so you know, sound. Um, but our in state tuition is about $9,000. Um, our out-of-state tuition is about 21000 So that is just tuition. That is not included room and board. Room and board is going to vary upon which dorm you're in, which meal plan you select, where we average it out to be about $11,000. So altogether, average in state your first year. Um, as an in-state student, you're looking at about $20,000. Out-of-state, you're looking at about $32,000. So average in state, we're not super huge. We're not teeny tiny either. We have about 4,300 students enrolled. Uh, our student faculty ratio is uh, 13 to one, our average class size is 20. And we sit on 236 acre campus. So basically what all these numbers mean is that you have small class sizes. You get that individual attention that you deserve. Uh, you will know your professors, they will know you. And most importantly, they're super invested in your academic success. So I'm sure you're super interested in what you need to do to apply to Virginia State. It's very simple. All we need is the application submitted online. Our application is free. It's always free. You can find it at vsu.edu slash apply. Once you submit your application, we just need your um, transcript showing at least six semesters worth of work and test scores if you have them. Now we are test optional, um, not only this year, but for the end of time. <laughs> so if you have test scores, still submit them anyways, but we do not need them to make an admission decision for you. Um, with that being said, last year's remaining class average was 2.8. 920 on the SAT and the 17 on the ACT. Uh, these numbers here are for our honors program. Um, we do have test optional options and test required options for our scholarships. You can see um, they start at a 3.0 and 1080 on the SAT or 21 on the ACT. Without test scores, um, we also require a 3.5 GPA in either two AP, IB, or dual enrollment courses. Um, or a top 25% of your class or um, valedictorian or salutatorian. So we're not gonna know that valedictorian or salutatorian status until you graduate. So what that means is that we're still gonna be giving out money over the summer. So um, definitely still apply, send that information in and we will still be able to evaluate you for a scholarship. So of course you wanna to go to school primarily to get an education, but it's not just about that. You wanna have a good time as well. It's all about balance. So we have 17 NCAA Division II sports teams. We're part of the CIAA conference. In particular, our men's basketball and football teams have both won the championship recently, and our women's volleyball team was rejected in the championship last year as well. So really great in athletics. We also have over 90 clubs and organizations on campus. They include student government, campus ministry, fashion, sports, Greek life, whatever you're into, we probably have that club or organization. And if not, then that's your opportunity to start it. We're also really huge with our study abroad program. In places before, such as South Africa, Ghana, China, Belize, France. Unfortunately, right now, due to COVID, we're not traveling, but hopefully, we can reinstate those programs soon because studying abroad is a great way to have a multicultural experience while still at an HBCU. So, we'll keep it short and sweet today. Um, if you have any further questions, um, feel free to call our office. The number is listed there. Uh, we also, once again, our application is free. It's always free. You can find it at vsu.edu slash apply. Um, May 1st is our priority admissions deadline. Obviously, that date is passed. We operate on a royal admissions basis, though, so we are still admitting students. So definitely feel free to still submit your application. Um, we just wanted you to have it in by that May 1st date so you can make sure you have your housing and financial aid taken care of, but we'll still get you taken care of regardless. Um, and we are evaluating you for scholarships and we're evaluating you for admission as well. So say so you get admitted, then your GPA goes up or you get updated test scores, make sure you send us that information so that we can give you um, another look and see if you qualify for any of our scholarships. And that is all I have for you this afternoon. Thank you for having us. Have a good day. Thank you so much.
Um, so at this time, we have a little bit of time left over. I'd like to invite all of our presenters back on camera to join me back on camera, I should say. And we'll go into what we call uh, our round robin Q&A. And the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start back with Lincoln University. Um, so my biggest advice for students who are trying to figure out where they want to go to school is to one, know what type of learner you are and identify the type of resources that you would need in order to be successful. And then two, making sure that where you're going, you will consider your home away from home because you're going to spend four years there. You're going to build relationships with professors, with other classmates and things of that nature. So just the place that feels like it's the right place for you to do that, because the school that I wanted to go to was not the place that was best for me, but where I ended up was basically where I needed to be. So just making sure that you're being real with yourself about your needs and ways for you to be successful. Elizabeth City, yep, go for it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Definitely uh, want to piggyback off of Lincoln. I agree 100% with what uh, my colleague stated. Uh, also look for, you know, somewhere that uh, has your major, of course, somewhere that is affordable uh, for your pockets, uh, someone that has scholarships, merit-based uh, athletics, if you're an athlete, um, somewhere definitely where you can feel like, like she said, uh, definitely a family-oriented environment for sure. Like Coming College. We may have lost them. So let's go on to um, Virginia State University. I agree with everything my colleagues have said. Um, but one thing I would say that will usually solidify your decision is visiting the campus of the institution you're interested in. Because you may think that, hey, I really want to be at a huge school. And you get there and you realize, oh, my gosh, this is not for me. And definitely a, a second part to that is visiting the school. I know it's kind of hard with COVID, but visiting the school when students are actually there, because you might think that, oh, I'm visiting this school over the summer because it's easy and you see what it's like, but students aren't really on campus then. So you don't really get a true feel for the institution. So definitely coming to check out a school, not only what you're interested in, but also when people are there so you can see what it's really like. Monmouth University. Um, definitely agree with with every uh, everything every representative said. Um, I'll also add in um, definitely trying to attend like open house events, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, I think that um, that does give you opportunity to connect with faculty members, um, some students to really get some of their feedback on what it's like for them on campus. Um, what some of those courses may look like. Um, I know at Monmouth, we do a Mondays at Monmouth when we're at, in person where students are able to come on campus and actually sit in on a class. Um, so definitely take advantage of visiting in person and making sure that place feels like home. Um, and definitely look at what kind of environment you want to be in, if you want to be in a large school environment, a smaller school environment. So definitely look at a lot of those statistics. Old Dominion University. All right, so I have two things. First thing, do your research. Um, with the internet, everybody's websites are very up to date. So make sure to be doing your research, making sure um, that you know we the school has your major that you're interested um, in studying. And you know, if the if you can't find your answer on the website, then feel free to reach out to somebody. Um, get connected with the schools that you're applying to. And then I will reiterate uh, the touring campus. Um, it was hard in the last year, but a lot of schools were able to, you know, take everything virtual. Um, and then YouTube, of course, you can view like student accounts on YouTube and see, you know, their personal experiences on these campuses. Um, and then, of course, you know, the university tours as well. And back to um, Lycoming College. Alrighty, well, I think we lost him, unfortunately, but I do want to extend a huge thank you to our presenters today. Um, and thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also this is just one of uh, many sessions happening. There is one more, so be sure to go and sign up for those. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. And thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.